About seven people have been rescued today. The remaining people, they are inside there. Guarim Power Building collapse. Emergency responders working to rescue more workers trapped in the rubbles. Central Bank of Nigeria set to prosecute sellers and abusers of new designed narrow notes. All relevant institutions and stakeholders ensure the faithful implementation of the national policy on the Nigerian government second level domains. Upscaling digital governance, President Buhari directs federal public institutions to migrate websites to government domains. Hello and welcome. This is NTA Network News. We are live in Abuja. I am Jumma Yusuf. Hingino John Adams joins me from our Lagos Network Center. Thanks so much for joining us. You can follow this news live on our website, nta.ng slash live, NTA News Now, and other social media platforms displayed on the screen. We'll begin with an update on the collapsed building in Guarumpa as a number of persons have so far been rescued from the ground floor of a three-story building which collapsed at 7th Avenue, Guarumpa. The building under construction had workers guarded early Thursday morning for continuation of work when the unfortunate incident occurred. Sefia Uchi reports that as at the time of filing in this report, rescue mission was ongoing to rescue the remaining persons. Work on the three story building located at 7th Avenue, Guarimpa, started about six months ago and it collapsed around 11 a.m. Thursday morning when the workers were about to go on a short break. The rescue operation started with the arrival of the disaster management agencies. People are inside, they are workers, and one of them, the engineer, have been rescued. About seven people have been rescued today. As at the time of filing this report, Total of 17 persons were rescued, most of whom were unconscious and taken to the hospital, while one person is confirmed dead. Nora Haliru, a brother to one of those trapped, was still communicating with the victim under the rubble. Where are you now? Can you stay here? The tractor working? No, it has stopped to work. More than 50, sir. More than 50. And we are less killed by five. However, presently, what we are now doing is we must save life first before we start trading blends. It is mean for us to set a committee to make sure all the things that causes this thing uh, is horrible. Rescue operations continues. Safi Uchi, NTN News. The federal, gov federal government officials have been directed to henceforth refrain from using private emails for official purposes. President Mohamed Buhari, who gave the directive, said all public federal public institutions must also migrate their website to relevant government domains produced by the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy. This was while formally unveiling the national policy on Nigerian government's second level domain as well as the national data strategy 2023 to 2027. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. Apart from preserving the identity security and global recognition of the Nigerian government on the internet. The use of private emails for official purposes is also a major limitation to the capabilities of securing, archiving and backing up sensitive data, thereby making it difficult to preserve critical government documents hosted on non-government servers. While this national policy on Nigerian government second level domains has the purpose of amongst others protecting Nigerian cyberspace, promoting transparency in government and enhancing Enhancing Digital Nigeria, the National Data Strategy has a goal of making data accessible, shareable, and actionable for social and economic gains. As an administration, we acknowledge that data is the core of the digital economy and a catalyst for wealth generation in the fourth industrial revolution. Nigeria can significantly benefit from the economic and social potentials of data 
and we can become a leader in the emerging global data economy. And this national data strategy is a step in the right direction. The launch brings to 21 the number of new national policies and strategies developed by the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy since 2019, and President Buhari formally applauded the Minister, Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi, for his commitment to the implementation of the mandate on digital economy. I urge the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy to keep up the excellent work. We are very proud of the great strides of our digital economy sector and the impact it has had on the different sectors of our economy. I hereby direct the Honourable Minister to ensure that all relevant institutions and stakeholders ensure the faithful implementation of the national policy on the Nigerian government's second level domains and the national data strategy. And uh, we strongly believe that the implementation of these two policies and most importantly the compliance of these two policies by our citizens will go a long way in supporting government to continue to consolidate the achievements of the sector and even all other sectors of our economy. Because today digital technologies are no more a standalone sector but rather it is the key enabler of all other sectors. Describing as unprecedented the contributions of the ICT sector to the nation's gross domestic product, which is now three times more than the oil sector, the President is also delighted that with the deployment of Starlink services, the first in Africa, Nigeria has achieved 100% broadband penetration in the nation's digital economy journey. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. President Mohamedou Buhari has made a strong case for Nigeria and her neighbors to place higher premium on effective policing of the borders as the fragile nature of the entry points into their various countries enhanced terrorism, economic sabotage and illicit flow of arms. He said that this while playing host to the Secretary General World Custom Organization, Dr. Kunio Mukria, State House Correspondent Adam Asambo, tells us more. The Secretary General of the World Customs Organization, Dr. Kunio Mikuria, is in Nigeria for a global conference on fragile borders. The subject of the conference, as President Buhari said, is of critical importance to Nigeria, which returns to the polls in the next three weeks to elect new leaders for the country. It is our objective to ensure this takes place in a peaceful and conducive atmosphere I have made it a cardinal commitment of mine to ensure each Nigerian is able to exercise their franchise by participating in a free and fair election in true practice of our relatively nascent democracy. Nigeria, he said, is honored to have the privilege of hosting the first ever global conference on enabling customs in fragile and conflict affected situations. It is our sincere hope that the conference will seek to understand the operating environment that exists around countries who struggle with fragile borders and see how comprehensive and exhaustive solutions can be proposed that deal with the multifaceted nature of this issue such that solutions are not burdensome but are properly allocated to all those who are a party and have vested interests in ensuring that we jointly tackle this menace. The President said already Nigeria has embarked on various measures towards achieving the objectives. These include supporting the armed forces in effectively policing the nation's borders, integrating technology into border operations, strengthening the customs service, and providing stiffer sanctions against smuggling and other acts of economic sabotage. The chief scribe of the World Customs Organization, Dr. Kunio Mikuria, who appreciated Nigeria for hosting the global conference, said custom services must now go beyond mere revenue generation and delve into security, without which, especially at the borders, the needed revenue cannot be effectively collected. 
This conference is very important because it is to um, really raise the visibility of custom role in security. This project was suggested by uh, Colonel Ali six, seven years ago, but then uh, gradually it gained currency in the global customs community. Customs is often the target of armed groups. Uh, because if you choke customs, you can choke the local economy, but also revenue of central government. The Secretary General of the World Customs Organization, who is visiting Nigeria for the fourth time, has been formally commended by the President for his efforts at deepening the skill set in the evolution and growth of the Nigeria Customs Service in the 21st century. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Governor May Malabuni has expressed formal appreciation to the federal government and of the federal government and people of Yoruba State to President Mahmoud Buhari for agreeing in principle the takeover of the recently completed cargo airport and the state special hospital by the federal government. The governor delivered the message to the Nigerian leader at the state house from where Adam Sambo reports. President Mohamed Buhari was in Yobe, Pride of the Sahel, on the 9th and 10th of last month on a state visit, the first by any Nigerian leader in the last 18 years. During the visit, which confirmed the restoration of peace, law and order in the area, several legacy projects executed under the consolidation, continuity and innovation agenda of the Mai Malabuni administration were inaugurated. Amongst them, the International Cargo Airport, named after the president, in whom the people of Yobe are well pleased, as well as the maternal new state university teaching hospital. Governor Booney had requested the takeover of the management of the two critical infrastructure projects, which in principle the president agreed to. The Yobe state governor is here to formally say thank you to the Nigerian leader for this and other unprecedented support and assistance to Yobe State. Their discussions held behind closed doors for about 30 minutes also centered on issues of interest to the state and the Nigerian nation. Positive feedback from the ongoing electionary campaign by the governing APC as well as efforts at ensuring peaceful and credible 2023 elections. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says it is collaborating with the Nigerian Police, Federal Inland Revenue Services, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit to address unpatriotic behavior, which includes the sale and abuse of new designed banknotes. Statement by the Director of Corporate communication of the bank or Sita Onwani Sobi indicates that the CBN is concerned about the queues at ATMs and reported cases of unregistered persons and non-bank officials swapping banknotes for members of the public purportedly on the behalf of the CBN. The Apex Bank warned that it is unlawful to sell the Naira spray or step on the currency under any circumstances according to section 21 subsection 3 of the central bank of nigeria act 2007 as amended it stipulated that spraying of the or dancing or stepping on the note or any note issued by the bank during social occasions is punishable under the law by fines or imprisonment or both. The statement explained the CBN is working to address the challenge of queues at ATMs and directed deposit money banks to commence the payment of the redesigned Naira notes over the counter subject to a maximum daily payment limit of 20,000 Naira. Now for an update on the new Naira notes at the ATM, it is barely a week to the deadline of the 10 days extension for the retrieval of the old Naira notes. Now the situation seems to be the same as cash-strapped Nigerians struggle to adjust to the new reality. Bosedi Ebel is standing by with an update from some markets in the FCT. This is the famous Wuse market in Abuja. Businesses are on standstill because most of the traders are on queue at some of the ATM terminals in the market to get cash. Before we knew what was happening, our attention was called to this scene. 
Someone collapsed due to exhaustion. Do settle this issue as soon as possible. So that everybody, you can get your money whenever you want it. I want them to make it easy for us to be withdrawing our money. Even if you go to the other ATM, you can come back and tell somebody that you left this line, you've gone, you've gone. We actually need more circulation of the new cash. While traders are hustling for cash at various ATM terminals at the Wuse market, the case seems to be different here in Gariki model markets. They have finished the whole money at the ATM. Even if they are not paying you the normal money you need, they will give you 1000 2000 Transfer network is slow. I mean, it's really discouraging, sincerely. To transfer, there is no network. So it's just frustrating. Most of them, they will go. And most of them, I will collect their numbers. And up to today, like the people that did transfer, yes, they have not seen their money. I'm here not to come and buy money. I didn't come to buy any food stuff. I'm here to come and buy because in my street there are a lot of ATM, but queue there you will stay two days you have not cashed out anything. That's the situation update here in Abuja markets. I am Bosse de Ebo. We'll take a break now. When we return, more reports do stay. People of Nigeria, make we all come out on election day and vote as Shiwaju Bola Tinubu as president. Make Nigeria for better. Make you put your hand for APC, the party where show broom. Not forget, to oh, now broom, you go put your hand in. Bam! On election day, I go take my PVC. When I try a day vote, I go my go put my hand over for Tinubu. You're welcome back. Now, as part of efforts towards ensuring effective implementation of the redesigned new Naira notes policy, the enforcement team of the Central Bank of Nigeria has inspected the operations of commercial banks in Bauchi State. I will Abdullahi complete the report. The enforcement team comprising CBN, EFCC and ICPC officials were in some commercial banks in Bauchi to monitor their transactions. No, 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 that's not an excuse and we are not taking it. From Friday to date, you have, you still have the balance of 91 million. And people are out there looking for money. And you are not the only 1.52 million in the The aim is to ensure total compliance with the CBN directive toward ensuring effective implementation of currency redesign policy and cash swap program. What we do is to look at the allocation given to the banks, then we trace it to their books, how much was loaded in their ATM machines and how much they've given to their agents. Looking at the ATM machines, we look at the record of how much each of the ATM uh, carries. Then we look at the total amount withdrawn by the individuals. Well, so far so good, we are able to trace most of the money. But we also have some issues that we take off with them. Like in some of the banks, we have seen over 80 to 90 percent of what was disbursed to them still in their vaults. We query them for not giving to their agents. They are supposed to give this money out to the agents that are listed, that are registered with them, for them to carry out this swap. But to our dismay, they don't. Most of the banks we have visited have not been forthcoming in the swap. The team also inspected the operations of some ATM machines within and outside Bauchi Metropolis. In Bauchi, Awal Abdullahi, NTA News. For more on the new Naira policy, let's join Benny Adams for Business News. Hello, Benny. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to business. As Nigerians are getting to adapt to life without much cash in hand, small business owners advocate efficiency by financial institutions and internet service providers. 
it has not been easy. It has not been easy. Even, even the old one itself, we know they say. Even the new one, we know they say. And the POS, they, they charge us well, well. They, they charge us, so you know, just easy for us. Since yesterday, the person do transfer for me. Since yesterday, I never see the block to today. So, bros, you know, just easy. How are we say network will even day so that we will feel they run this uh, cashless policy for even day very, very much? Yo, what's up? I get account number. I they collect transfer, they collect old money, I be new money anyway. And taking a look at the markets, the Nigerian stock market maintained its positive trend on Thursday, rising by 0.93%. As investors gained 272 billion naira at the end of today's trading session. On the exchange, a total of 2.869 billion shares in 3,940 deals corresponding to a market value of 8.069 billion naira were traded. Compared with previous trading day Wednesday, today's data shows 46% improvement in turnover and 6% improvement in deals. The current market capitalization is 29.4 trillion naira. Universal Insurance Company recorded the highest volume of 2.72 billion traded shares followed by ICO Insurance 14 million, Guarantee Trust holding 13.9 million and Stalin Bank 10.2 million. Well, that is business news. Network news continues with Jumai. Thanks, Benny. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed has appealed to Nigerians to bear with government over the hardship they are passing through as a result of the introduction of the redesigned Naira notes, describing the pain as temporal in view of the greater benefits it will bring in the long run. The minister also explains that President Muhammadu Buhari is fair and equitable to the sub-nationals in the sharing of the nation's commonwealth, irrespective of the party they belong. State House correspondent Jite Onifade reports. Ghana means the most countries, including that of Nigeria, are challenged on many fronts. Factors impacting the current situation, as Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed says, are driven by an interplay of external and internal causes, which are playing out in several ways. Despite all these, the Nigerian economy, she says, is still standing strong on its feet. Up till today, Nigeria has not failed in any of its debt service obligations, whether external or local. And our medium plan also shows that we are still well situated to continue to service our obligations. The ministry provides extraordinary financial support to states to ensure national fiscal is in a good stead. The minister says government is taking the back seat while giving support to the private sector to take the driving wheel. The national development plan uh, that has been, that we're currently implementing, has uh, costed uh, the plan at 385, uh, 350 trillion, and um, 85% of that is projected to be funded by the private sector. So that signals that government is pulling back and has to pull back because we don't have the resources to continue to engage in commercial activities. The minister also speaks of the federal government's concern on issues arising in relation to the redesigned Naira nodes. not easy and uh, Mr. President is not happy that citizens are really suffering. But we are convinced that it is something that needs to be done at this time. And also, the central bank has been responsive. But the positive side of it is that there is a lot of currency that has been mopped up by this operation. Minister Hakmet was the guest at the 65th edition of the State House Executive Briefing of the Press, organized by the presidential media team, headed by Femi Adeshino. At the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Foreign President Mohamed Buhari's administration has projected the image of Nigeria positively since assumed office in 2015. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jofi Onyema made this known at the 22nd edition of President Mohamed Buhari's administration's scorecard series featuring foreign affairs. Good relations, not just with the countries around Nigeria, but with countries around the world. Nigeria is one of the few countries that, does, that has no enemies. Uh, there's no country you can look at and say, we are fighting this country over any issue. Even Cameroon with the Bakasi Peninsula, we resolve that peacefully. 
Information and Culture Minister Lai Muhammad has cleared the air on his ac reaction to a question at the post-federal executive council meetings on Wednesday. The minister made the clarification at the 22nd edition of the PMB scorecard series in Abuja, which featured the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema. Anthony Fosson reports. The Information and Culture Minister Lai Muhammad was asked to react on the allegation that certain persons were working against the party. This comment regrettably has been misinterpreted in some circles, especially with regards to Mr. President's support for the presidential candidate of our party, the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinobu. Well, I want to say unequivocally that Mr. President is in total support of our party's flag bearer. And that is attested to by his continuing campaign with the candidate across the country. It is preposterous to even suggest that Mr. President, who is the leader of our party, is equivocating on his support for a presidential candidate. I hope this clears any ambiguity that may have arisen from my statement yesterday. Laya Mohamed restated President Mohamed Buhari's commitment to positive democratic ideals. I said in Taalia that Mr. President is committed to a free, fair and credible election and that he's doing everything possible to ensure a level playing field for all contestants. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Nigeria Meteorological Agency says the wet season will commence in March this year. In this report, Musa Baba Ali takes a look at the seasonal prediction and expectations of farmers. Hamatan is gradually pulling out, paving the way for hot and humid weather conditions. Weather researchers believe that heat often triggered rainfall. The states that will experience the early onset of rain as predicted by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, Abayelsa, Rivers and Akwaibom. The season will be delayed in the northern states, which include Sokoto, Kebi, Zamfara, Kanu, Katsina, Jigawa, Yobe and Borno. The onset dates for parts of Adamawa, Bochi, Gombe, Kwara, Oyo, Ogun and Lagos are likely to be near than long-term averages. On rainfall cessation dates, NIMET predicted an early end of season over parts of the south, comprising Ocean, Ondo, Edo, Delta, Imo, Bayelsa, Rivers, Akwaibom states, parts of Yobe, Adamawa, Niger, Nasarawa, and Kogi states are also predicted will have early end of season when compared to long-term average conditions. To this end, Time of planting for farmers in most places will near long-term average, except for some parts of northern states like Katsina, Jigawa, and Kano. We are shorter than long-term average length of growing season is anticipated. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. You're welcome back and joining me in the studio to shed more light on the prediction for 2023 is the DG Naimit, Professor Mansour Matazu. You're welcome to Network News. Thank you. Good evening. Last year was quite, you know, a big, huge surprise for Nigerians. Of course. Now the prediction for 2023 is out already. Yes. So can you paint us a scenario of how it should look like? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as you made mention earlier, uh, we released a prediction by a, for 2023 by our supervising minister, Senator Hadi Sirika, precisely 24th uh, of uh, last month. Uh, to Nigerians and also we invited all states and all stakeholders cutting across all rainfall and climate sensitive sectors. Uh, and the summary of the forecast is uh, that we're going to see a averagely normal uh, season uh, with areas and pockets of above normal and below normal uh, as uh, highlighted by the last presenter who attended uh, our release. Uh, but definitely uh, last year was an extreme year uh, and because for this year we're going to, we're going to experience a dual phase of ENSO. Uh, the beginning of the rainy season uh, will have 
uh, a cold lanina enso phase and um, which will now metamorphose into a neutral phase so this will have a sort of a trigger of below normal and pockets of above normal so 2023 will be quite much more uh, lower in terms of intensity that we have seen of rainfall and floods uh, compared uh, to what we have seen in 2022 last year uh, but of course we're in the era of climate change and uh, remember during the release of the forecast we also released a climate change book which was published by NIMED and some other partners from across all the eco-climatic zones and this has established locally that we have evidence of climate change and these climate change indicators will trigger and increase some of these extreme events. So we're going to see this uh, and of course also we have highlighted in the forecast uh, that the big season will begin in by 2nd of March in the coastal regions and also in April at the central parts of the country and June, July will also uh, have the northern yeah. fringes have their onset period. Uh, but early before this, what we are experiencing now, as we have seen in Abuja, it, is it, what we call the season. some drizzle, yes, in Abuja, <laughs> yes. Last, Yeah, quite exactly. Week. And even in some po pockets in, in the south, yes. uh, in parts of Ondo, and also, which also they experience high intensity storm. But all these were highlighted in our forecast uh, in what we call pre season activities. Okay. This is a transition we're seeing. We're okay, just farmers are excited now. I have to quote you. In farmers are excited, the rains will come early. Do they go to the farms early or do they wait a little? Because it's like there's going to be, you know, a, a cessation of the rainfalls in the early months of the rain. Yeah, actually, uh, for, for every local government, uh, we have detail in the forecast and in the documents, and it's available online. It's also, we also have an app. Uh, so it's, it's, it's that uh, we, we have what we call onset dates. Mm -hmm. And these on this onset dates are not dates uh, for the first rain. So there are dates uh, as a result of accumulated uh, rains, which has will now eventually lead to enough to triggering a lot of soil moisture of about 50 to 60 percent. And for each 774 local governments, we have in the detailed documents okay. indicating these onset dates. And the summary of these onset dates that the coastal region will experience their onset date around the first week of March, while the inland southern states also will have April as their onset. Okay. Okay. May at the north central and June July by the no, uh, northern fringes. So farmers should please uh, do what we call preparatory activities, okay. land clearing and purchasing of inputs. Uh, but we're going to have relatively uh, normal season with pockets of flash flows and dry spell as highlighted yes, in the, the forecast. Yes, uh, we've actually run out of time, uh, Professor Masur Matazu. I, I'm sure we'll be having you continuously. Maybe before yeah, actually, the we, yes, we'll be, this we'll be we have given enough lead time of about six months that we've released the forecast as early as January because we know election is coming and there are going to be a lot of activities. But we're going to follow up with monthly updates okay. and we have weekly and also the three days of update. Okay, uh, Professor Mansour Matazu, DG Naimit, thank, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for to, you know, shed more light on the seasonal predictions for rains. Thank you and I good hope evening. we have good rains, good fortune this we time do. around. Great. Thank Thanks. you so much. Yeah. We'll, take, we'll go to Lagos now where Hingino is standing by for more on Network News. Thank you, Jumai. In preparation for the 2023 you, Unified Jumai. Tertiary preparation Matriculation for... Examination, UTME, Registrar of the Joint Admissions Matriculation Examination Board, JAM, Professor Isaac Oluyede, has inspected some computer-based centers in Lagos to ensure compliance with the board standards. Correspondent reports that the register suspended for UTME registration agents. At all the centers inspected, Professor Oloyede had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with the candidates. It was expository as he discovered that four UTME registration agents were collecting above the normal registration fee. This led to their immediate suspension. We are in Lagos and I've discovered, and I'm, I've discovered where you sold uh, the fee higher than the price. Uh, he said they have no reason to extort candidates because the board pays them 5% of whatever they generate from the approved amount weekly. You can see even the, 
most embarrassing discovery we got today of a bank that is affiliating with Remita to a stock candidate for up to 3,000. <coughs> Even those who are doing 99 uh, uh, we are suspending them. Not to talk of a bank, the, which your logo on the script, and you are not uh, uh, courageous enough to give the receipt. You gave, gave the candidate receipt of 5,000. 700 and collected 8,700 from them. On the second day of the inspection, the JAMP team uncovered a center where one person thumbprinted for four students as well as an unlicensed registration center. We don't wait till people attempt. We want to detect. So we're strengthening our detection now so that uh, the attempts can now be reduced. JAMP insists that the deadline of February 14 stands as there will not be an extension. The Nigeria LNG Limited will continue to support the development of research on technology and innovations in Nigeria towards the advancement of scientific breakthroughs. General Manager External Relations and Sustainability Development NLNG Andy Ode said this at the LCCI NLNG Business Stakeholders Interactive Forum in Lagos. Aboladi Salami reports. The Nigeria LNG in 2004 initiated a science prize award of $100,000 as a way to encourage researchers to utilize scientific knowledge for the achievement of desired solutions significant to national issues. In recognizing the immense contributions science and research have provided to national development, NLNG Limited a leading producer of LNG and natural gas liquid for exports has been rewarded the best research works in critical sectors including power, road construction, information technology and food security. Being a company committed to building a better Nigeria, NLNG is seeking ways to ensure that these improvements bring about positive developmental changes in our country. Chairman Advisory Board, NLNG, Professor Bath Energy represented said NLNG Limited, an organization that operates with the best global practice, carefully selected the best two works on gains of grain yield of released maize, cultivars under drought and well watered conditions, as well as the development of process plants for planting flour from the 80 entries. The objectives of the prize, which seeks to identify and promote excellence in utilizing scientific knowledge for the achievement of desired In the face of threatening weather conditions, we need new methods, tools, and infrastructure to cope with emerging challenges in agriculture. The work researchers said were designed to have multiplier effects with benefits on Nigerians. My challenge in development of new varieties involves identifying suitable varieties with good performance in different ecologies. The 2022 Nigeria LNG Prize Award for Literature has the theme, Innovation in Sustainable Food Security. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Time now for a break. The news will be back with Jumai shortly. Thanks for joining us. NMPC Limited has signed a memorandum of understanding with Dewu Engineering and Construction Nigeria Limited for the quick fix repairs of Kaduna Refining and Petrochemical Company. The MOU, which is one of many fallouts of President Muhammadu Buhari's bilateral visit to Korea, is expected to reposition the facility for optimal performance. Lydia Sanson reports. Refineries are critical to optimal product supply and availability, and Group CEO NMPC Limited mainly carries says harnessing Nigeria's fossil fuel towards attaining energy security and cleaner fuel is only true the refineries working at optimal capacity. We are conscious of the fact that our four refineries in three locations are down now, all of them now under some form of a, a rehabilitation process, and also we are committing this uh, the Kaduna refinery today so that ultimately our 18 million liters per day gasoline production capacity will be restored. 
the Korean ambassador to Nigeria and COO Plant Division Dewu are optimistic that the MOU is the beginning of sustainable economic diplomacy between Nigeria and Korea. So we see a great potential in our uh, economic co cooperation in the northern part of Nigeria. And led it to deliver a remarkable plan in terms of quality, costs, and schedule to your full satisfaction. The project will be executed in three work packages, and the SMA cont contract sum is 740 million. 669,600 US dollars with a duration of 21 months. Key players say the quick face will ensure technology transfer and job creation across the value chains. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Let's talk politics. The All Progressives Congress presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been described as the only candidate who has the interests of the people at heart. Former Ogo State Governor and Ogo Central Senator Ibukunle Amosun stated this during the flag off of the African Democratic Congress governorship campaign in Abeokuta, the Ogo State capital, where he urged the electorate to cast their ballots for the party's candidate B. Otebe. Lekon Hambodi reports. The amphitheater of the Ake Palace again played host to the convergence of party stalwarts and faithful as ADC presented the governorship candidates B. Otegbeye and other candidates of the party. Senator Amosu, who did not hide his determination to work for the success of the presidential candidate of APC at the poll, however, appealed to the electorate to give their mandate to ADC in the governorship election in order to effect positive change in governance in the state. I believe strongly that the presidency should come to the south. And that is why I am supporting Ajiwa Dukona and Mesh Tinumbu. ADC governorship candidate B. E. Otegbeye offered himself to serve by bringing dividends of democracy to the doorsteps of the people if given the mandate. We have plans for the economy and we have plans for everybody to ensure that the prosperity of the state is shared. To let you know that we have the best authority in governance of Leaders of the party had earlier paid traditional homage to the Alake and paramount ruler of Ebaland, Obadidotun Badebo, for royal blessings. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. Meanwhile, presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Adebayo Adewele Ebenezer, says if elected Nigerians will bid farewell to poverty and insecurity as his administration would harness the vast human and material potentials of the country to improve the welfare of all citizens. This was during an interactive session at the Nigeria Citadel of Research, the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIM School. Caleb Goshen has a report. The Social Democratic Party candidate was in jaws at the invitation of the leadership of NIPS to interact and intimate the participants and Nigerians about his vision and mission as a candidate. Adebayo says he is building on the legacies of the founding fathers of SDP, like the late Moshud Abiola, who stood for the emancipation of the masses and also believe that a better Nigeria is possible for all with commitment. I will give every Nigerian access to modern facilities, access to primary health care, access to sound education. So a school in a small village will be as well equipped as a school in Lagos. Director General of NIPS, Professor Ayo Omotayo, underscored the place of NIPS in the developmental journey of the country and that as a place of convergence of intellectuals, hearing from the candidates is key. We are making efforts to reach all the other parties who come to NIPS and talk to Nigerians. Panelists drawn from media, civil society organization, academia and other key sectors raised issues bordering on their respective jurisdiction where the candidates responded accordingly. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, NT News. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent. 
and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. on Go TV to make things a little easier. Upgrade to the next package and we'll boost you to a higher package for free. Go TV. Love it. You're welcome back. President Mohamedou Buhari has congratulated the owners and management of Arise News Channel on their 10th anniversary, commending them for the efforts at reading Nigeria of colonial mindsets and promoting Nigeria's heritage. A statement by President Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Gerber Shehu, quotes President Buhari as urging Arise TV to continue leading the way in transforming the society. President Mohamedou Buhari felicitates with the executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Nami, on his 55th birthday, praising him for making commendable efforts to raise government revenues, especially at this time of great need. President Buhari notes that the leadership and guardians of Nami has repositioned operations and staff of the agency, using technological tools to institute far more transparency, accountability and effectiveness, which has in turn translated into the increased capacity to deliver on mandate with results manifesting seen. The president commends the executive chairman for bringing many years of experience in financial services to bear on the foremost tax regulator with a growing impact on the economy, especially as the government expands and prioritizes infrastructure development. The Federal Road Safety Commission has promoted 3,628 staff, including two assistant corps marshals appointed to deputy corps marshal. A statement from the FRSC says the two deputy corps marshals are to proceed on terminal leave with immediate effect. The statement quoted the board chairman of FRSC, Buhari Bello, expressing delight over the height of transparency and objectivity that heralded the promotion exercise and urged the officers of the FRSC to do more to create a safer motoring environment in the country. The remains of late Chris Omera Ekele, former acting permanent secretary of Kogi State Ministry of Works and Housing, have been laid to rest in his hometown, Iano, in Ibaji, local government area of the state. Francis Udojo reports that family, friends and former colleagues were on hand to bid him final farewell, including the executive director engineering of the NTA, Stephen Opanachi. The funeral obsequies of the late Chris Omera Ekele began with a service of songs at the deceased Lokoja residence, where family members, friends and colleagues, as well as sympathizers, gathered to pray for the repose of his soul. A late engineer Chris was an engineer by excellence. He was uh, a giver. I pastored him for so many years, him and his family. He, he has contributed a lot. He was a man who had vision, who pursued the vision of his life. I thank God because he's generous and he's responsible. Those who are alive today should make an amen. He's somebody who is peace-loving. The remains of the late Chris Omira Ekele were committed 
to Mother Earth in his compound in Yango. He is survived by wife and four children. Francis Udojo, NT News. That's it on the news. Thank you so much for watching. I am Jumba Yusuf. Don't forget to join NT in the fight against rape and rapist.